All right, 58. So we are going to graph each rational function and complete the indicated data, or complete the indicated data, then graph, whatever. Well, the first thing that we have to do here is um, factor, and this is already factored for us, so that's nice, right? So are there any holes? No. So no holes. Then I can find my roots, which are at negative 2 and 0, right? Vertical asymptotes, x equals negative 6, x equals 3. Is there any tangent C or togetherness? Yes. Which one? Togetherness. Goes from the bottom. What about the top? Tangent C. So we got both, right? Tangent C comes from the numerator. Togetherness comes from the denominator. So, um, so numerator, denominator. So we have that x squared. That means we have tangent C at x equals 0. And we have togetherness at x equals 3. Okay, we agree with that? We'll talk about what that means and what we do with that here in just a second. But do we have a horizontal asymptote? Yes, they are tied in degrees, so that means this one would be y equals what? 1. And again, to clarify, just because they're tied in degree doesn't mean it's y equals 1. It just happens to be y equals 1 on all the ones that we've done so far. So then this is none. So it would be nice if I had the multiplied out version because it makes my y-intercept pretty easy. But um, I still don't really have to do any work to get my y-intercept. What is it? Zero, right? Because if you have a root that's zero, your y-intercept is zero. That's just the way it is. Zero, zero. Because that's where that point is. So now I'm going to scroll, and then I'm going to rewrite this. You don't necessarily have to rewrite it, but I'm going to rewrite it so I can see it. This is equal to x squared over x plus 2 over x minus 3 squared times x plus 6. So I'm going to have four things I've got to put on my number line. I have a negative 6, negative 2, 0, and 3. So then I'm going to test stuff. Well, anything that I put into x squared is going to come out positive. Anything I put into x minus 3 squared is going to come out positive. So the first one in the numerator, first one in the denominator, positive no matter what. So let's try a negative 7. This would be positive, negative, positive, negative. So that's positive overall. Then let's do a negative 3. Positive, negative, positive, positive. Negative overall. Then negative 1 will be positive, 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 positive. Positive overall. Let's put in a 1. Positive, 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 positive. Let's put in a 4. Positive, 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 positive. Positive overall. So then we shade. This is positive, negative, positive, positive, positive. Remember, the whole point of this number line is that we're putting our asymptotes and our roots on there. Those are the only places where you could change sign from positive to negative. Just because you can doesn't mean that you do, obviously, because we got you know positive, positive, positive here. So let's think about what this means. At, is zero a root or is it an asymptote? It's a root, so it's like a point here on my x-axis, right? And then is three a root or an asymptote? Asymptote. Okay, so then we have an asymptote right here. So here's where the tangency and togetherness comes into play. You've got togetherness around the asymptote, so you know that your graph has to look like this, right? Okay. Tangency means that it's positive, it's going to hit the axis, and then it stays positive. Make sense? Do we have any other asymptotes anywhere? Where? Negative 6. Okay, so I have an asymptote here at negative 6. So then I can actually continue what my graph looks like here. This is another, so this is positive. It has to change to negative and go like this. Since this is my asymptote, there's no togetherness there. It looks like that. So that's basically what my graph's going to look like. I get all that from the sign chart, okay? It's very, very helpful to me. Now my graph's going to look hopefully a whole lot better on here, and i got to figure some other stuff out, but that gives me the general idea of what's happening. You with me? So if you can interpret this, it's going to help you with your graph. All right, so let's graph what we know. We know that we have roots at negative 2 and at 0. We know that we have vertical asymptotes at 3 and at negative 6. 
and the tangents and togetherness will come back to horizontal asymptote y equals one and then y intercept at zero zero okay so that's what I've got so far so from negative infinity to negative six my graph is positive so it should be up here somewhere right and then from negative six to negative two my graph is negative so it's going to come up here and we hit this right from negative two to zero it's positive and then from zero to three it's positive so it's got to come up i know i'm going to cross that asymptote at least once to be able to get up this way you with me so what i would like to know is am i just going to cross it once here because clearly i'm crossing it here or am i going to cross it in more than one place and it could be somewhere else so like before i ever even draw anything else in <clears throat> my asymptote, so this is my function, which this is also y, right? And we have y equals 1. The whole idea of this is this is my function I'm trying to graph. This is my asymptote. I want to know, do those things ever intersect? Am I ever actually going to cross it? I already know, yes, I am once. So am I going to cross it? Well, in order to do this, we're going to use substitution. All I'm doing is taking this and substituting it in for y right there. So I'm going to get x squared times x plus 2 over x minus 3 squared times x plus 6 equals 1. So then I'm going to solve and I get x squared times x plus 2 equals x minus 3 squared times x plus 6. Okay. So I'm just going to tell you what that is all multiplied out to save us some time because you should be able to multiply that, that out and simplify it because that's way old business. When you do that, what you get is x squared plus 2, I'm sorry, you get x cubed, plus 2x squared equals x cubed minus 27x plus 52. Okay, so that's what you get once it's all, you know, you square this, you multiply, and you clean it up, and blah, blah, blah. So now we solve. So if I subtract x cubed from both sides, those zero out. Then I'm left with an x squared, so basically I'm left with a quadratic. I'm going to go to 2x squared minus 27x plus 54, and that equals zero. Oops, equals zero. Oh, good Lord, yes, thank you. Help if I did it correctly. So when you move things over, make sure that you are moving them over legally, unlike what I just did. Thank you. Um, so I'm going to add 27x to both sides, and then subtract 54. There we go. Thank God, I hope I did it right last period. I did. Okay, good. <laughs> I second guess myself there for a minute. So then I would try to, in order to solve this, I would try to factor it. So I'm going to tell you right now, it doesn't factor. So since it doesn't factor, what do I do? Quadratic formula, right? So x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a, bless you, times a negative 54. Because that's what it is. x equals negative b plus or minus the square I'm solving for x. It's a whole idea. All over 2 times a, which is 2. So once you clean all this stuff up, you get x equals negative 27 plus or minus 3 times the square root of 129 all over 4. So just from that right there, how many times am I going to cross that asymptote? Twice. I got two answers, right? Two answers there. I'm going to cross it twice. It would be nice to know what those actually are so that I could go in and graph them. So my x value is negative 27 plus 3 square root of 129 over 4, comma 1, and negative 27 minus 3 square root of 129 over 4, comma 1. But do you have any concept of what that value actually is? No, me either. It's all good. So you would use a calculator here to help you get the actual number. What this becomes then is like 1.768 comma 1 and negative 15.268 comma 1. It won't be that yucky, but you probably, you're going to have to test something. Yes, absolutely. All right, so then, um, and you've got to know quadratic, quadratic formula is algebra 1, guys. I mean, plain and simple. The multiplying it out to algebra 1. Like all this work right here, 100% algebra 1. Um, 
so then I'm going to have to plot this. So this 1.78768 comma 1, that's right here where that makes kind of makes sense if we think about what's happening with it. So I'm going to go to 1 point, like 1.76A, 1.75, whatever, 1. Make a point right there where it's going to cross. The other place it crosses is at negative 15. So I can't even get to that on my graph. But I do know that it crosses somewhere out there. And if I had that, I'd be able to know that it drops down below, the, below that asymptote. So we'll talk about that as we draw that in. So nothing else I'm going to be able to graph crossing it besides this one. All right, so now I need, I need some sort of point over here, right? And I've kind of run out of room to do my stuff so you can see it. Um, I need some point. I've got, this is what, negative 6. So we'll try negative 7. So we'll do my little t-chart over here, x and y. So I need to find f of negative 7. When I substitute that in, that gives me negative 7 squared times negative 5 over negative 10 squared times a negative 1. So watch this, and remember, we think smarter, not harder. Negative 7 squared is 49, right? So we're going to get 49 times a negative 5. I'm not even going to multiply that. Over negative 10 squared is 100, but then times that negative is a negative 1. You with me? Okay, so now the negative over negative, I know in the end my answer is going to be positive. Not only that, but because I didn't multiply this out, I've made my life easier, because 5 goes into 5 once, goes into 100 20 times, so I get 49 over 20. Okay. Stop multiplying absolutely everything out. If you don't have any number sense and that doesn't make any sense to you, I don't know what to tell you, but you have got to practice that stuff. Stop using a calculator. Start making yourself understand how the numbers work. Okay. So now, the um, negative 49 over 20. So 20 goes into 49 twice with 9 left over, so that's about 2.5. So we go to negative 7 and then 1, 2.5. Would you say that that point right there is enough? Yes. Okay, so because it's going to have to come like this, and we know that it's all positive, right? So we know that it's coming down like this. Oops, I'm sorry. Okay. It's coming down like this. Now, it's going to hug the asymptote right here, but at negative 15, it is going to drop below and then have to come back up and hug from underneath. But we don't even have that part to graph on there, so all we can graph from what it looks like, it looks like this. But do you understand how we know it actually crosses it out there? Yes? So then, from negative 6 to negative 2, it's negative. So from negative 6 to negative 2, it's negative. And there's no togetherness, so I know it's coming up like this. So I know it's coming up like so, right? Then from negative 2 to 0, it's positive. And I know when it goes positive, it does not go above the asymptote because it does not cross it there. So it's going to come up and then come back down. And then at zero, that's where your tangency happens. So it hits that, and then it bounces back up to cross the asymptote there. And then it stays positive all the way up like that. Okay. You see how we figured out how all those pieces fit together? Okay. Then we have this part over here, which I know I have togetherness. So I know that this is going to come down this way, right? But I don't know if it comes down real close in here. I don't know if it swings out real far in here. So I need some points. Um, you want to try 4? Okay, so we'll try a positive 4. So when I substitute this in, f of 4, that's going to give me 4 squared times 6 over 1 times 10. Do you agree with that? So 4 squared is 16. Well, this 6 and this 10 I can reduce. This is 3 and 5. So I really just get 16 times 3 over 5. What's 16 times 3? Uh, 48. So I get 48 over 5. So 5 goes into 48 how many times? 9 with 3 left over, so it's like 9 and 3 fifths. So if I go to 4, I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 and 3 fifths. Well, that's great. I already knew that it came down like that. So, you know, you don't know what you're, you're picking points. You don't want to get too crazy. Sometimes that point right there will give you something that's like way down here, and that's all you need. So you just never know. So 5 may not help me that much more since I was so far up there, so let's try 6. You don't want to jump too far out either, otherwise you'll just be, you know, if I got a point like way out here, I don't know if that helps me either because I don't know how I got there. If I got there like this, if I got there like this. So um, we'll use 6. So f of 6 is 
6 squared times 8 over 3 squared times 12. Okay, so again, number sense here, right? This is going to give me 6 squared. I can't divide this and get 2. That's a big fat note. But this is 36, and when I square the 3, I get 9, right? The 8 and the 12, I can divide these both by 4, so this is going to give me 2 times 3. So I get 36 times 2 over 9 times 3. Can I reduce the 36 and the 9? Yes. So this goes in there 4, this goes in there once, so you really get 8 thirds. Okay. 3 goes into 8 twice with 2 left over, so I can go to 6 and then 2 and 2 thirds. 3, 4, 5, 6, and then... One, two, and two thirds, about right there. And I feel like that that helps me some with my my graph. It looks like this. And am I gonna ever cross the asymptote out over here? No, I am not. What questions do you have? By the way, this work over here, which is to actually figure this stuff out, that's systems. That's huge on the SAT. That's huge in calculus. That's huge in everything. That was a lot of it on the SAT. All right, let's look at the next one. All right. So do I have any holes here? No. My roots are negative 2 and 3. This stuff can't even slow you down anymore because this, 100% of what you are, well, not 100%, besides the tangents and togetherness that you're just identifying, all of this is algebra 1 or algebra 2, all of it. So it can't be tripping you up at all. You can't be like, I don't know how to find the vertical asymptotes. Well, you're in the wrong place. Um, x equals negative 1 and x equals 2. Do I have any tangency or togetherness? Yes. Which one? Tangency. So I have tangency at x equals negative 2. Do I have a horizontal asymptote? No. It's top heavy, so there's none, which means that opens the door for the slant asymptote. So it's really nice that this is factored for us, but guess what? When we divide, this factored form doesn't help us any, right? You should be capable of multiplying all that back together because that's algebra 1, and I'm not doing it for you, so I'm just going to tell you what it is. You get x cubed plus x squared minus 8x minus 12 over x squared minus x minus 2. So do I get to use synthetic division here? No. So I have to take x squared minus x minus 2 divide it into x cubed plus x squared minus 8x minus 12. Again, algebra 1, you should be able to do it. When you divide, you end up with x plus 2. Okay, so y equals x plus 2. Okay, I'm not going to spend time on that kind of baby algebra. Y-intercept. Well, it's nice to have the factor that the multiplied out version because then I can get the y-intercept pretty easily. My y-intercept is 0, what? Okay, so now I'm going to rewrite the factored form down here so we can do our number line. And that's going to give me x minus 3 times x plus 2 squared, oh, squared over x minus 2 times x plus 1. All right, so I have four things going on my number line. And let's see. My smallest one is negative 2, then negative 1, then 2, then 3. Do we all understand how to handle a number line? Yes. Okay. So I'm just going to tell you what it is then here. So this is negative, negative, positive, negative, positive. I feel like I've done enough of those with you that you shouldn't know what to do and we won't spend any time on that. I'd rather spend time on talking about how to get it on the graph. Okay. So now that we've figured that out, and that you have something that's negative, negative should make sense. Is this tangency or togetherness here? Tangency. So you're going to have a bounce there. All right, so let's graph. I've got, I know that my roots are at negative 2 and 3. I have a vertical asymptote at negative 1 and at 2. And I've got tangency, but we'll come back to that. I've got a slant asymptote at x plus 2. So I go to 2 on the y is my y-intercept. My slope is 1. Just like that. 
and my y intercept at 0, 6. Isn't that All right. Everybody okay with all that so far? What, cut, what happened that seems a little weird? The asymptote went through a point, right? Like, what the heck? So, is this going to cross my asymptote? Yeah, at least once right there, right? So, I need to know, like, does it cross it more than once? We'll come look at that in just a second. But let's think about what we do know here. We know that from negative infinity to negative 2, our graph is negative. So, it's going to have to come up. It's negative. It hits that negative 2. And then it's going to bounce back down and stay negative. But here's what we don't know. We don't know if it comes up on top of the asymptote and then bounces here and comes back down on the other side of it, or if it comes up from underneath and then bounces there and then comes back down. Does that make sense? Like, I don't know that left-hand part if it's on top or bottom of this asymptote here. could go like this, or it could go like this. You see the difference? Right? Plus, I don't know, maybe it, maybe it bounces and, like, it goes back and forth. I don't know that either. So I need to know how many times this thing is actually where, how many times and where is it going to cross the asymptote. So my asymptote is y equals x plus 2, right? So this is the function I'm graphing. This is my asymptote. I want to know where do they intersect. That is a system of equations, you guys. So you take this, you substitute it in for y, and we're going to get um, x minus 3 times x plus 2 squared over x minus 2 times x plus 1 equals x plus 2. Because instead it equals y, it equals x plus 2 because I'm substituting. So then I solve it. So then I multiply both sides by the denominator. x minus 3 times x plus 2 squared equals this x plus 2 times x minus 2 times x plus 1. So at this point, you would have to multiply all that out. Okay, so I'm just going to tell you what it is to save us some time because that's algebra 1 and I'm not wasting time on that. So when you multiply all that out, you're going to get x cubed plus x squared minus 8x minus 12 equals x cubed plus x squared minus 4x minus 4. So then I solve. Well, if I subtract x cubed from both sides, those zero out. I subtract x squared from both sides, those zero out. So that leaves me with negative 8x minus 12 equals negative 4x minus 4. So I substitute this in. Or don't substitute this in. I'm sorry. My brain is somewhere else. I solve this. I will solve this by um, adding 4x to both sides. I guess so this will give me negative 4x. And I'll add 12 to both sides, so that equals 8. So x equals what? Negative 2. Okay. So when we're looking for our ordered pair, we were just saying, oh, it's this and then comma 1, because 1 is what we were substituting in right here. But we're not. We're substituting in x plus 2. So my x value is negative 2. My y value basically is x plus 2. Right? So that means I'm actually at negative 2 what? 0. And I already have that point, right? So this is the only time that that function is going to cross that asymptote. Everybody okay with all that? Ask me a question. If you have a question, I know you do. I can tell by the look on your face. Like, <laughs> say my first rodeo. Ask me a question. It's okay. You don't have it? You sure? Okay. I'm not trying to call you out. I'm just like, I can tell with that. Sometimes y'all look and you're like, what? Or if you look at me like, you're crazy, then I usually know that you're like, I don't think sometimes you realize the looks that are on your faces. Like some people give me some really dirty looks and they're confused. <laughs> I know they don't mean it that way. See, I knew this. Yeah, so I just plugged in the X to that and that's where I got that from. Yeah. I knew you had a question. Um, all right, so that means I still need to know, am I coming from above the asymptote or below the asymptote? So I need a point, right? But I mean, that this wouldn't have necessarily told me that anyway. It just tells me I know that that's the only place it crosses. So I need to find a point over here. So this is at negative 2. Let's go with negative 3. Right? So if I do f of negative 3, we might need some more. So, so f of negative 3, I set this down. Hopefully we can see. Oh, shoot. Which one is it? This one. Um, so I can see my function here. When I figure that out, um, I'm going to get 
It's going to be negative 6 times negative 1 squared over, what did it do, negative 3, negative 5 times negative 2. All right, so this is going to be just a positive 1, so it doesn't affect anything. Overall, when I finish this, is it going to be positive or negative? Negative. Negative, negative, negative gives me negative. Okay. Which makes sense because it's supposed to be negative there anyway. So this 2 goes into 2 once, goes into 6 three times. So I really just end up with negative 3, negative 3 fifths. Make sense? We're good so far? So now that's a point somewhere on my function. So I go to negative 3, negative 3 fifths is right about there. So now I know that I'm going to come from this side of the asymptote. I'm going to hit that point, come here, and then go down like that. That's why you got to be able to get through the easy stuff quick because you got to think when you're graphing. It's not just slopping it on a grid. All right, I know. I'm going to make you think. It's just terrible. All right. Um, so now between negative 1 and, oh, and that was our bounce, by the way. So we knew that it was negative. It's going to be tangent, and then it's still negative. So then between negative 1 and 2, it's positive the whole time. Well, I have this point right here. I know that it's going to, there's no togetherness, so since this is coming this way, I have to come this way. When I hit this point, it may be the minimum, maybe it's not. But I do know that I'm not going, to, I'm not going to cross that asymptote anymore because that's why I did all that work. Um, so I can just draw in this, and either it's the minimum or it's not, and that's what it has to look like. So now, the third section of the graph on the other side of that vertical asymptote, I've got this one point. So that's, you know, when it's, it comes up and then it's going to just look like this. There's your graph. Oop, that's bad, though. See how I made mine curve back out? That's not going to happen. It gets closer and closer. Let me fix that. It is a lot to think about. I know. Welcome to the big leagues, guys. Yes, and you're going to be quizzed and test over. It's crazy. All right. We okay with that? We good? Yes, it may not be this crazy, but you are going to have to think. I am going to make you think. I know, it's terrible. All right, now number seven. Do I have any, Z, uh, do I have any holes? We don't know yet, right? Because it's kind of factored, but not factored all the way. Very good. So I need to finish factor this. Yeah, Amber's on it today. So we get x minus 4 times x plus 3, because we need it fully factored anyway. x minus 1 all over x plus 2 times x minus 2. All right. Now, are there any holes? No. But I needed to do that anyway because I needed to find my roots, which are going to be at negative 3, 1, and 4. Vertical asymptotes, x equals negative 2 x equals 2. Is there any tangency or togetherness? No. Do I have a horizontal asymptote? No. Very sad, right? Um, so that means that opens the door for the slant asymptote. So again, I'm just going to give you the multiplied out version here. This will give you x cubed minus 2x squared minus 11x plus 12 over x squared minus 4. Do I get to use synthetic division? No. i got to do long division. So this is x squared minus 4. Divide that into x cubed minus 2x squared minus 11x plus 12. Algebra 1 skill right there. So boom, when you're done, you get x minus 2. Go ahead. That's okay. Uh-huh. Right here. Okay. Uh-huh. Well, because that would have that should have been fully factored out to begin with. Does that make sense? You did. You did. And you can force it that way. The problem with that, um, I see what you're saying. It makes nasty fractions. So it's, it actually makes this easier. And even though you don't know, like long division, it would be easier than the synthetic division. But yes, you can force it down that road. We just didn't do it because I feel like it's a bad thing. Yeah, you can do it that way. As long as you know what you're doing, it's fine. So my slant asymptote is y equals x minus 2. 
then I like the multiplied out version to give me my y-intercept. What's that? Try again. Negative 3, right? Yes, negative 3. I'm going to make these second guesses. Go first. Okay, so now I'm going to scroll, and I get f of x. Let me rewrite this. f of x equals x plus 3 times x minus 4 times x minus 1, so 2. And then that's over x plus 2 times x minus 3. Well, no, I was just thinking, I thought, I thought that I had multiplied, I thought that I had done this one, and apparently I didn't test it, but that's okay. Well, okay, so yeah, we have five things on here. One, two, three, four, five. And so my smallest one is negative 3, negative 2, 1, 2, and 4. All right, so then I will just tell you what happens because we all can do this, right? This is, this one just alternates negative, positive, negative, positive, negative. But you don't get to just like guess at that. You have to actually go through the process. Exactly. And it's going to alternate if there's no tangents here together. It's very good. Um, all right. So now I'm going to plot what I know I can plot. So I got negative, I got rooted negative 3, 1, 2, 3, and 4. And vertical asymptote at negative 2 and 2. Slant asymptote at y equals x minus 2. Like that. And y intercept is 0, negative 3. All right. So then I'm going to check out what's happening over here from negative infinity to negative 3, which is right here, the function's negative. So I know it's coming up from down here. From negative 3 to negative 2, it's positive. So that tells me that it just looks pretty much like that. Then, now in the interest of time, I'm not going to, we're not going to test this one. I'm going to tell you it's just going to cross once. Um, uh, but when I have when I have here from negative two to one, my function's negative, so it's going to come up this way, and it's negative the whole time, and it's going to have to cross that asymptote, right? I don't have a choice. And then from one to two, it's positive. So when you have the middle part of these, it's either going to look like a parabola, or it's going to have the the properties of a cubic, meaning that there's a point of inflection here, and it's kind of stretched, so I'd be better if I do it from right to left. It's going to look something like this, but you got to have a little point of inflection so it can come back down the other way. Do you see how that kind of looks cubic-y? Okay, and if you just follow it, it's, just, it's not a straight line. Like, you can't be. And so we didn't have any togetherness. That's why these are opposite, right? And this was negative and this is positive. There's still no togetherness, so I know that this has to start down here. Plus, I know from 2 to 4, it's negative. So from 2 to 4, it's negative. Then it becomes positive the rest of the way. It just looks like this. Okay. Yes? We good? Okay. Yeah. Mix. It's a lot of work, but you can do it. Graphing. Graphing. Yes what we're doing, graphing. You're going to have to graph. All right, so then number eight. Is this factored all the way? No, because no, of this right here. So to actually factor it all the way, you get x minus 1 and then x plus 4 over x plus 2 squared. Right? That helps a little bit. No holes, exactly. So this is none. Then my roots are negative 4 and 1. My vertical asymptotes 
our x equals negative 2, which is one of them. Any tangency or togetherness? Yes, which one? Togetherness, because it's in the denominator, and that's at x equals negative 2. So round the asymptote. Do I have a horizontal asymptote? Okay. Yes, exactly. An even exponent ever. Most of the time it's going to be squared for us, but if it's an even exponent. All right, okay. So horizontal asymptote, yes or no? Yes, because they're tied, and so it's y equals what? Three. Not always one. It's the, the leading coefficients. If you multiplied all that out, the leading coefficient of the numerator would be three. The leading coefficient of the denominator would be one. So three over one is three. This is none. So for my y-intercept, i got to actually do some work here. So I've got f of 0, right? So when I substitute in 0, this is going to give me 3 times negative 1 times 4 over 2 squared. Well, isn't 2 squared 4? So can I cancel those out? And it's 0, negative 2. Yeah. You think for yourself when you need to think. All right, everybody good so far? Yes, yes? All right. So f of x equals 3 times x minus 1 times x plus 4 over x plus 2 squared. So I have three things to put on here. Negative 4, negative 2, and 1. So when I shade, I've got positive, negative, negative, positive. Because remember, this is where my asymptote is, right? So this is where your togetherness is, like this. All right, so let's see here. We've got, let's plot what we can plot. I've got roots at negative 4. 1, 2, 3, 4, and 1. Vertical asymptote at negative 2. Horizontal asymptote at y equals 3. 0, negative 3 is my y-intercept. Okay, so I need to check to see what's happening um, over here. I know from negative infinity to the negative 4, I'm positive. So it could be right here, or it could be above the asymptote. We don't know. We need to see if we're going to cross the asymptote or not. So I'm going to take 3 times x minus 1 times x plus 4 over x plus 2 squared and set it equal to what? 3. Because my inner, my um, asymptote is y equals 3, I'm substituting that in here. Boom, 3. Okay? So now I'm going to multiply both sides by x plus 2 squared. So I get 3 times x minus 1 times x plus 4 equals 3 times x plus 2 squared. Can I simplify anything right here? Yeah, I can divide both sides by 3. Boom, those are gone. So then when I multiply these together, I'm going to get x squared plus 3x minus 4 equals x squared plus 4x plus 4. So now when I subtract x squared from both sides of 0 out, I can subtract 3x from both sides. That will leave me x over here. Then I subtract 4 from both sides, and I get negative 8. I was just, I was just solving this two-step equation right here. So I get negative 8. What's my y value? 3. So I go to negative 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 1, 2, 3. So I do cross the asymptote right there. Okay. Now, here's what I know when I go to draw this in. I know that this is going to have to hug this asymptote down here. It's even going to hug the horizontal asymptote. So it's, I, I do not go through here and like keep on going up like this. It goes up here, and then it goes above the asymptote, but then it's still going to, the end behavior is that it's approaching the asymptote. Let me see if I can get this by actually hitting my point. It's going to come up like this. It comes above it, but then it comes like back down, and it's going to hug the asymptote on the way out there. And that's the only place it intersects it, so I don't have to worry about the rest of it, right? It won't come back down and hit it again, and on the right-hand side, it's not going to hit it at all, because that is the only point I got when I solved it, okay? 
So then over here, I've got these two points and I've got some asymptotes. I feel like that's enough. I can, well, pretend like I hit my point on there, just make it bigger. There we go. It looks like that. And I know for sure it does not go over it because that is the only place it intersects. Okay. Everybody okay with that? Yes, we good? Yes, you have to think some. You should be able to get through like all the stuff at the top and your sign chart pretty quickly. The thinking comes in with you putting it on the graph and you can do it. Okay. So once again, your assignment looks very much like your um, notes. Some people haven't even started their assignment from yesterday. This is it. Not even yours. Well, I bet you somebody over there still hadn't started. But I would suggest you graph, graph, graph. It wasn't due today, but. 